Arhat iconography is not a simple matter. The the entire topic of the of the Arhats is uh, is is old. It's 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 uh, been out there for a long time because we have a lot of art going back. In Tibet, the art goes back to the 11th century with Dratang Monastery, where we have uh, some an image of, of uh, uh, Shakyamuni Buddha surrounded by many, many monks. Uh, and at the bottom, we have a Manjushri and a Maitreya in conversation. Now, these, uh, these monastic figures are often referred to, uh, in the case of Dratang Monastery, as Arhats. Although they do not fit into any system that we know, uh, any textual system. Now, Arhat uh, is a, a specific appearance. It's one of uh, the 11 main appearance types uh, within figurative art uh, of the Himalayas. And uh, the definition is, is a, a male, generally elderly, um, sometimes a little bit wizened, a little bit um, uh, a furrowed brow, uh, gray hair, definitely older, and wearing a variety of, of, of uh, clothing and robes. And uh, early on, often the robes are multicolored. Uh, they change over time, uh, and uh, there's specific reasons for this. And there, there are 16 of them. And then we add the two, uh, the attendant, the Dharmatala, and the patron, Hashang. Then we have, we have 18 in total. Now, the appearance of the Arhats is based on a Chinese model. It's based on a Tang Dynasty, said to be Tang Dynasty, model of, uh, of the Arhats and paintings that were done in the emperor's palace. Taizong, Emperor Taizong. So, so in Himalayan art, we find these arhats are painted in, in multicolored monastic robes. It's like strips of cloth, uh, similar to the Indian system, but all the strips of cloth are all different colors. Now, also coming out of the Chinese system, we can have the arhats wearing, wearing shoes or boots, which is very unheard of. Uh, we can also have them wearing long uh, sleeves, like a full shirt, which is not permitted in the monastic and the Vinaya system, uh, nor are the, the shoes or boots. So we have different systems. Now, early Himalayan art uh, de clearly depicts the, the arhats in this, in this Chinese kind of manner. Uh, later versions, maybe starting in the 18th century, 17th century, definitely in the 18th century with certain teachers such as uh, Situ Panchen, uh, they, they recommended that the Arhats, since they are of Indian origin, should always be painted in an Indian style and not in a Chinese style. So that was a clear break that he's making from the artistic tradition. Now, we have 16 of these, of these fellows. Only two of them, now they're all named because we have a text. We have the, the, the Nanda Mitra uh, text uh, from the early 4th, um, 5th century where it lists all 16 names. Only two of them are really identifiable. Uh, Rahula, who is the son of the Buddha, Buddha Shakyamuni, and he's often depicted young because, of course, his father is a little older. So he's depicted as the youngest and often with an Ushnisha on the crown of the head. Now, the second one who, who's readily identifiable is Bakula because he's holding a mongoose in his left hand and his left arm cradled against his waist. So these two uh, are, are, are quite identifiable. And the, the, the mongoose, of course, is coming out of a later text. It's coming out of a Shakyashri Bhadra text. So this is a 13th century. And this is where we get Tibetan iconography, uh, where we have certain attributes in the hands of the arhats. Now, we can't get too confused with Bakula being the same Bakula as who was a student of Shakyamuni Buddha, because we actually have a Bakula Sutra, and Bakula, the Arhat, the original Arhat, he actually passed away, passed into Nirvana prior to the Buddha going into Mahapari Nirvana. So the Bakula that we have from very early sutra literature 
is not the same as the bakula that we find in the 16 arhats. So there's many, many issues with, with uh, identifying who these arhats are and what their functions are and whether or not they're actually arhats or actually stavira. In Tibetan language, they're called uh, natan, which means stavira, elders. They're, in the Tibetan system, they're not called actually arhats, which is a drajompa. So it's a different thing entirely. So the iconography is very complex and it has changed over the last thousand years.